You're listening to episode 62 of the ESL Teaching Podcast. This month, I'm talking about helping English learners in the mainstream classroom. The students are learning multiple subjects during the day, so in an effort to help classroom teachers understand how they can help English learners, I am sharing episodes about content area-specific EL teaching tips. Last week, we talked about the first steps to take if you are a classroom teacher who has just found out that they will have an ESL newcomer in their classroom. If you haven't listened to it, I highly recommend you do that. It is episode 61. And also download the free Classroom Teachers ESL Newcomer Survival Checklist. Today, we're talking about math. Many times we have heard someone say, math is universal. I teach math. I don't know how to teach kids to read. Or my job is to teach math, not language. If this sounds familiar, this episode is for you. Today, I'm sharing four math-specific tips that can be easily implemented and will allow you to understand how to help your English learners. We will talk about the very first step you need to take to help ELs feel empowered in math, vocabulary to focus on, how to present the information for best results, as well as tips for eliciting responses. No matter the subject area you teach, having an EL newcomer in your class can be one of the most rewarding experiences. And if you are an EL teacher listening to this podcast, be sure to share this episode with your colleagues. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the ESL Teaching Podcast. I'm your host, Yeva Grossless, otherwise known as Simply Yeva, and I am so thankful that you tuned in. I'm looking forward to sharing both my knowledge and experience on this podcast, as well as that of my fellow teachers. Hello, hello, everyone. As mentioned in the introduction, there are several phrases that are quite widely adopted and not even questioned. Number one, math is universal. And number two, I am not a language teacher. My job is to teach math. Well, I would like to present to you a different view. Each of the subject areas taught in school come with their own set of language demands and students are learning a subject through language. That is why we have the language of math, language of social studies, language of science, language of uh, language arts, and so on. So effectively, all teachers are teachers of language. For example, in language arts, students are required not only to work on the structure of the language and complete grammar assignments, but also to manipulate language in creative ways and recognize literary elements such as metaphors and similes, not to mention express themselves fluently and creatively in writing. In social studies, students are required to understand long and complex texts that use past tense and contain a lot of tier two vocabulary that can be found across content, not to mention amount of background knowledge necessary to grasp the information and specifically historical terms. Same goes for science. Not only information in the subject is frequently presented in passive voice and dense long sentences, but the students also encounter a lot of subject area specific words and terms. And math is no exception. So ESL students have the special challenge of learning a new language while learning core content, which is, uh, let's face it, uh, created for native speakers. This means it is your job as a math teacher to teach math to ESL students and teaching math to them doesn't look the same as it does with native speakers. It might seem daunting, but I'm here not to make things complicated. In fact, quite the opposite. I like to simplify and break down my tips in order to make them as accessible as possible to all teachers. The best part is that these tips not only will help them learn the language they need, but will also allow them to learn the math skills you need them to get as well. All right, so let's dive in. Tip number one would be to teach the numbers first. There's no getting around it. 
To learn math, you have to know the numbers and number words. Your ESL students may have a math background before they come into your class. Depending on their age and educational background, they could even be a math whiz. But without the words to talk about it, you may never know. Give them the foundation they need to show what they know, help them build their math skills, and that means start with teaching the numbers. When you teach math to English language learners, keep it simple. Start with the basic numbers 0 through 10, and then continue adding more number vocabulary a little bit at a time. Keep teaching and practicing number vocabulary until you reach the highest value you'll use in class. But remember, teaching this is rote memorization. If your ESL students don't use it, they might lose it. Make an effort to let them use their number vocabulary every day. Here are some ideas to let them practice. For example, show them a picture of a number and have them name it before entering the room. Another example is solve a problem on the board and ask your student to say the answer. Practice saying phone and room numbers. Have your student count off a number line as an exit ticket. Let them skip count with a partner. Um, I like my students to literally read the dates. Tell me the dates uh, every single day because those use numbers. It is a quick and easy lesson, a quick and easy practice and consistent practice, but don't overlook it when teaching math to your ESL student. Another tip is make sure your student understands the concept of number. If they have interrupted education, they may need help understanding what a number represents. This is true even if they memorize the name. So teaching number names is the rock bottom foundation for teaching math to English language learners. Now, if you're listening to this and asking yourself, okay, Yeva, this sounds nice and dandy, but does that mean I have to spend time looking for yet another resource to help them learn? Don't recreate the wheel. I have created a lesson on math numbers and number words specifically for ESL students so that they can get started off on the right foot. I will link it in the show notes. It is on my Teachers Pay Teacher store. Tip number two, teach math vocabulary to ESL students. And this is, again, for as an ESL teacher, I could go wild here by creating all kinds of activities because my jam is to teach the language. But these are the tips for you, the math teacher, okay? So if you are not comfortable with... Um, all kinds of intricate language teaching, here are these tips. Anything you say that students need to understand to solve the problem is math vocabulary. Math vocabulary is huge. It has math specific words. There are multi-meaning words, words from other subjects, you name it. To be successful in math, your ESL student has to understand a lot of words. So as the math teacher, it's your job to pick out what words your ESL student needs to get the meaning and to solve the problem and to understand the concept and lesson. So first of all, look at the standards in your lesson and the identify math specific words. These should be the easiest to pick out. For example, equation, ratio, linear, sum, solve, etc. Okay? Find these words and explicitly teach them to your student. The good thing with math is that many of uh, these particular math words you can actually demonstrate on the board. So there's not only the listening, reading element, but also the visual. Uh, this would be a perfect time to build a vocabulary notebook. Again, you can use a simple notebook um, or you can do an interactive notebook, whatever your system is, don't recreate the wheel. Anytime you use a new math vocabulary word, add it to the student's notebook or rather the student adds it to their notebook and then let them use it whenever they need it. Uh, ask them to use it when they are responding to you uh, in solving the problem or giving their answer. The next step is multiple meaning words. You don't know how many multiple meaning words are in math until you start look for looking for them, right? So, and these words can be devastating to an ESL student learning math. 
So teach them how you will be using them in class, okay? Again, add them to their vocabulary notebook. For example, table, product, couple, column, and so on. Find the multi-meaning words in your lessons and front load your ESL student with them. And this should stop you from getting a picture of a dining room table with numbers on it as an answer. All right, tip number three, be mindful of how you talk to ESL students. So your job is to teach math. And yes, you want to expose them to all the correct vocabulary and model your thinking as you solve the equation. But all those words and explanations make your lesson sound like you are giving it to Charlie Brown's class. Wah, 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 wah. Stop emptying your math dip dictionary in every lesson. Instead, focus on giving clear, simple, specific, and intentional directions. Use the new math vocabulary words you've been teaching your ESL students, but use them one at a time. Give a simple step using the vocabulary and then wait and wait and wait and wait a little bit more. And then when you feel awkward because you've waited so long, wait a little bit more. Now move on to the next step. The waiting process can be painful. Trust me, I know. But ESL students need more wait time to process the language first. You can repeat the word, you can repeat the question, but wait for their response. Then they use the language to make sense of the content. So here's a good rule of thumb. Native speakers need three to five seconds of wait time. ESL students need eight to 10 seconds, but ESL students are learning something new, content and vocabulary. They need 12 to 15 seconds of wait time. I know, uncomfortable. When teaching math to ESL students, make your instruction as simple as possible. Targeted, intentional, don't go heavy on the vocabulary, just the one that you taught them, let's say that day or that week, and practice extended wait time. And the last tip, tip number four, is allow your students respond in different ways, okay? So given instruction is only a fraction of a math lesson. See what I did there? You've done the I do, the we do, now it's time for the you do. When you teach math to ESL students, the modifications can't stop with your instruction. ESL students need modifications in how they show you they understand the material. So learn your ESL students' proficiency levels first. Ideally, every ESL student has an individualized learning plan, ILP, that tells what they can do in English. If you are not aware of it, if you don't have it, or if you don't know what it is, use my tip for that I shared in the previous episode, which means connect with the ESL teacher in your school. This will be your saving grace. From that, modify what you can expect them to do to show you what they know. So here are some ways that you can modify the student's output. For example, ask them uh, yes or no questions, okay? So they should provide a yes or no response. Beginner level ESL students don't have the language to explain their answers. Ask low level questions that show they understand the new vocabulary and, co and concepts, and that will give you a baseline from which you can move on. Tip, another tip is sentence frames and word banks. So give students the words you want them to use so they don't get lost trying to recall the specific uh, vocabulary. Lower level ESL students can put a few words together but need help with the sentence structure. Another tip is partner work. Let ESL students talk it out with a partner before answering a question aloud or turning in an assignment. It is common for ESL students to develop receptive language skills before productive. That means they will understand what you're saying before they can respond. Let them respond as best as they can while you continue to help them learn math, content, and language. You don't have to struggle to teach math to ESL students. Adjust your language and output expectations while keeping the content the same. 
I hope this helps you understand your role in teaching language as a content area teacher, as a math teacher. Here's a little recap of the four tips for helping ESL newcomers in math. Tip number one, teach the numbers and number words. This is an absolute must, no matter the age. Tip number two, teach the math vocabulary, specific terms and multi-meaning words. Number three, allow more wait time for responses than usual and comfortable. And number four, allow your student to respond in different ways. I have created a numbers and number words worksheet that will help you get started with teaching math language to your students. You can grab it right inside my Teachers Pay Teachers store and you will find the link it, to it right in the show notes as usual. Let me know what you thought of this episode. I always love to hear from my listeners. Leave a review wherever you listen to the ESL teaching podcast or by sending me a message on Instagram. As you know, my mission is to help as many teachers of English learners as possible and make your life easier by providing you with actionable teaching tips, ready-made resources, and meaningful coaching. Thank you for listening and until next time. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. If you loved what you heard today, be sure to do two things. First, make sure to subscribe to the ESL Teaching Podcast so you don't miss an episode. And second, leave a positive review wherever you listen, on iTunes, Spotify, or any other platform. Positive reviews will improve the chances of this podcast to be discovered in the feed and help our fellow ESL ELL teachers. And of course, there's a third thing. If you aren't following me on social media yet, Come join me on Instagram at Simply Yeva ESL, Facebook Simply Yeva, or connect with me on my website, simplyyeva.com. Thanks again, and until next time.